Stan Jabalisco here. I have an experiment that you might like to try. Uh, it's outlined in my book Electricity Experiments You Can Do at Home, published by McGraw-Hill, copyright 2010. You can get uh, paper-bound versions or I believe electronic versions through Amazon or uh, you might be lucky enough to order it through your brick bricks and mortar bookstore or even find it on the shelf if you're really lucky. Um, anyway, the idea is to build an AC electromagnet, not a DC electromagnet, but an AC electromagnet. And what you need is a threaded steel or iron shaft about three-eighths of an inch to one-half of an inch or about one centimeter in diameter and possibly um, 30 centimeters long, something like that. Some uh, AWG number 16 or 18 insulated wire. It's important that it be insulated. A couple of nuts that will screw onto that bolt. little electrical tape to keep the nuts from sliding off the ends. Screw them right up to the ends. Wrap the wire tightly around and tape over it so it'll stay in place. And you have yourself an electromagnet ready to be used. How do you make it work with AC then, you ask? Well, here is step A as outlined in figure mag 12-1 on page 306 of that book. What you do is you take a, a power strip with a triple extension, uh, triple outlet extension, a short extension cord, three feet, six feet, one meter, two meters, whatever, and you connect it in series with, with the live end of the line. Actually, it can be either end of the line, but uh, the live, not the grounded side, is the best side to use. Splice it, very carefully tape it. Now, this does not adhere to the National Electrical Code unless you enclose this junction in a junction box. Uh, then it will adhere to the National Electrical Code, presumably, in the United States. This is a schematic diagram of the arrangement. Why these outlets here, you ask? Well, what you're going to do is you're going to plug a 1500 watt electric space heater into one of these outlets and set it for high so that it draws, uh, well, it's usually about 1650 watts or 15 amperes. That will limit the current through the electromagnet to 15 amperes. You do not, and presumably then, that will not trip the circuit breaker in your home electrical circuit, at least in most 117 volt AC electrical circuits in the United States. In Europe and other countries, these parameters may differ. But what you do not want to do is directly plug your electromagnet into your outlet because you will trip the breaker immediately or blow the fuse or if you if your breaker fails to trip or if you don't have one you'll probably start a fire in the wiring in your house or your electromagnet will burn up and melt and it'll be a very bad situation you need to limit the current through this electromagnet to 15 amperes then you have an AC electromagnet and to get a diagram of the polarity versus time, you can imagine that the polarity reverses as the current direction in the coil reverses, provided that this core material here, this steel or iron bolt, doesn't have too much hysteresis, uh, hysteresis being sluggishness to respond to magnetic fields. Most wouldn't at 60 hertz or 50 hertz in much of the rest of the world. Uh, it'll be north, then it'll switch over to south one 120th of a second later, or one 100th of a second in much of the world. And the complete cycle will take one 60th of a second in the United States and one 50th of a second in much of the rest of the world. So you'll get an alternating 
magnetic field. How is that going to act, you might wonder. Well, that's what the experiments are for. You would expect that a ferromagnetic magnetic substance like an iron plate or a steel plate would get attracted to either side of this electromagnet just as if it were a DC electromagnet. And uh, in general, that is true. But what happens if you place, say, a magnet, a refrigerator magnet near one of these poles that has constant polarity? What's well, going to attract half the time? say if the refrigerator magnet has its south pole facing the uh, one end of the electromagnet, it's going to attract when that electromagnet has a north pole and it's going to repel when it has a south pole and then they're going to alternate so fast that it's going to be as if, uh, as if the magnet wasn't even a magnet. Presumably, that's what you would expect. But you have to do the experiments to find out uh, and in order to get details of how to do the experiment, I recommend that you purchase the book, although if you have an imagination, you can just go ahead and try it yourself. The important thing to, to remember is that you must limit the current through this electromagnet uh, by means of an, an appliance which will not blow the fuse or trip the circuit breaker because this electromagnet is going to look essentially like a direct short circuit to your home electrical system. So you want to limit that current. The other thing you want to do is to enclose this entire splice, which you should solder and then electrical tape over very carefully. You should enclose that all in a junction box so that if it catches fire, it won't cause a fire uh, anything uh, externally to the, the splice itself. So with all these caveats and precautions, I invite you to create your own AC electromagnet. Don't, you know, don't shock yourself to death. I mean, don't be stupid. Um, don't be stupid, Stanley. <laughs> uh, that's a tall order. Stan Gibalisco signing off. Until next time, so long.